Here we have an example, our first example of how to deal with linear momentum. We'll start off with an easy one. We have a rotating disc. A uh, rotating disc has a radius of 2 meters, a mass of 200 kilograms. It's rotating in a clockwise direction at 4 radians per second. And we're going to drop a bag of sand, 50 kilograms of sand, a little over 100 pounds, right on the edge of the disc. Now notice the bag of sand is not moving uh, in a rotational direction, simply gets dropped on top of the disc. As a result of that, what will, what will be the final angular velocity of the disc and the bag of sand together? So, how do we do that? Start off with saying that the initial moment, uh, angular momentum equals the final angular momentum. So what we're going to do is figure out all the angular momentums of all the objects before the collision. Notice that only one of the two objects has angular momentum because this one is being dropped straight down. So that means we have um, uh, I1, omega 1 initial, plus I2, omega 2 initial. And if this is the second object and this is the first object, then this, of course, immediately goes to zero because it doesn't have any angular momentum. It's not moving around in any circles. And that equals, since they're now together, right, hopefully the bag will stay on, on the edge, and then they'll be the bag will be rotating with the disc, so we can now add up the two angular momentums, I1 plus I2 times the omega final. And of course, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the omega final. So remember how to find angular momentum? Well, the angular momentum of the disc, since we're assuming that there's going to be a solid flat disc, that is going to be equal to one-half the mass times the radius squared. The angle momentum of the bag, well, there we can assume that it's a point mass, a singular mass at the edge of the disk, so all the mass is at the largest distance away from the center, so we're going to call that uh, m r squared. Now, I did remember that this should be big M because we call the mass of the disk big M to separate it from the mass of the bag of sand. All right, so there's, there's the moment of inertia, so let's plug those in now. So we have, um, well, before we do that, maybe we'll, we'll solve for omega final first. So let's bring this on, down in here. So we have I1, omega 1 initial, divided by I1 plus I2 equals omega final. So now we can go ahead and plug in all the numbers that we have. So I1 is going to be I of the disk, which is 1 half the mass of the disk times the radius squared. We're going to multiply that times the initial angle of velocity, which is a minus 4 radians. Minus 4 radians per second. And then we divide that by the sum of the moment of inertias of both the disk and the bag of sand. So that would be 1 half mr squared plus little m r squared. Remember, little m is the mass of the bag, big M is the mass, mass of the disk. Plug in the numbers. 1 half times 200 kilograms times the radius, we said is 2 meters, we square that, plus, oh, not plus, multiplied, times minus 4 radians per second. That's the numerator, and now we're going to add the two moment of inertia, so we have 1 half the mass, 200 kilograms, times 2 meters squared, plus 50 kilograms for the bag, times 2 meters squared. Okay, now working this out, we have, uh, that's 4, that's 2, that's uh, 400 times a minus 4, that's a minus 1600. And notice that we have kilograms meters squared in the numerator and kilograms meters squared in the denominator, so that cancels out, so we're left with radians per second. Divided by, in the denominator, we have that's 4, that's 8, that's 400, plus another 200, that's 600, and so that is equal to minus 2.67 radians per second. All right, so that would be the final angular velocity. Now, that makes sense because when we take a look at it, notice that we have the disk first rotating at minus 4 radians per second, and then we drop a bag of sand on it, which is going to slow it down, uh, but obviously not enough to make it completely stop because angle momentum is conserved and notice so we have the initial angle momentum of the disc the initial angle momentum of the bag is zero added together that equals the final uh, angle momentum of the two combined with the final angle of velocity 
And so that's how you solve for that final angle of velocity.